Pre-order the Clownfish TV comic book right now on Indiegogo. Go to clownfishtvcomic.com. That's clownfishtvcomic.com. This is a fun collection of all new comic strips based on dumb stuff we've said on the show. Again, that's clownfishtvcomic.com. You're going to have to hurry. We're only taking pre-orders for a limited time. Now we're going to get back into the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. She's going to be back though. Uh, she, she usually comes back. I hope she comes back. She'll be back. Uh, we're going to talk about the writer's strike, the WGA strike in Hollywood. It has officially begun. We did a video which actually did really well uh, the other day talking about how we don't think it's going to go the way people in Hollywood are expecting it to go because we're in a very different economic climate than we were during the 2007, 2008 strike. I think it was 2007. Uh, again, armchair observations. I'm not a member of the WGA. Obviously I'm just a guy on the internet, but we do know some people in Hollywood and uh, they do talk to us on occasion and not everybody is on board with this. Uh, I want to be clear. Uh, in fact, some people think it's stupid. Some people think it's kind of a suicide run. Um, you know, because you're asking for more money and more leverage in a time when everybody is cutting their spending. This very seldom goes well. And we're going to look at the list of demands. I had a friend send over a list of demands from uh, Adam Conover. You know, Adam ruins everything, who I do agree with him about some stuff. Uh, I do. But in this case, I'm like, dude, I don't I don't think this is going to go the way you guys want this to go. And I think this shows just how out of touch uh, some people living in L.A. are. I'm sorry. There are some really good people working in Hollywood. But, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure how this is going to play out. I'm really not. Um, I don't think it's going to go as well as it did back in the the aughts. So we're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, I'll give you a woohoo, woohoo, if you subscribe. Geeky's not here. Her woohoos are much better than my woohoos. I I can't woohoo. Um, I just I can't. I, I just I can't muster up enough excitement <laughs> about this. But yeah, if you've been living under a rock, uh, Hollywood writers, uh, part of the union, WGA. They're going on strike, and as I understood it, they were you know trying to get better working conditions. They were trying to um, make sure that the writers' rooms were full. They wanted longer seasons. They wanted job security. Basically, what this is about is job security, and I, I really hate to break it to you. And I, look, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer here because, um, again, there are some good people that work in Hollywood, right? But right now is not a good time to ask for a raise. Um, I, you know, When I worked different companies, when the company was doing very badly, it is not a good time to ask for a raise. And all of these studios are doing really bad right now. All these streaming services are cutting shows. And they were cutting shows before the threat of a writer's strike because these shows weren't bringing it. So what I think is going on here is a lot of people realize that that's where things are at, that they're probably going to get cut. And they want to get a they want to get a uh, an agreement in place. So when their time comes, they get a payout. We're seeing this in digital journalism, too. Isn't it weird that right before all these websites started shutting down, uh, everybody tried to unionize? And the reason they did that is because they knew what was coming. They knew they were going to get pushed out the damn door and they wanted to have severance in place. And I mean, look, who wouldn't? You know, seriously, who wouldn't want to have all that stuff uh, in place? But right now, um, I think the studios are in the catbird seat because so many people watch Netflix. So many people watch streaming. There are limitless options for entertainment because of the Internet. We're living in a very, very different time than we were back then. And uh, I'm going to be clear. I don't know how this is going to play out, but I do know that scripted television, sitcoms and dramas and that sort of thing is not nearly as important to Hollywood as it used to be. It's not as important to streaming services as it used to be. If they can get by with more Korean shows or more anime or more you know, imports from other countries, uh, more reruns or whatever, or even you know, bringing in content from studios outside of the Hollywood system, you know, non-union workers, they're going to do it and they have the option to do it. I think what could potentially happen is you're basically going to sign your own pink slip. That is that is my personal opinion. Again, this is coming from uh, an employee 
a former employee of many different companies over the years, and I've been laid off a few times. And, you know, there is a pattern I've, I've seen, especially when it comes to unions. I, and I'm not anti-union. I will be very clear about that. But I have seen a pattern of people deciding to unionize at the wrong damn time, and they put a huge target on themselves, and they made themselves very disposable. In fact, uh, one guy I worked for at one newspaper I used to work at, he actually sold off the printing division of his company just to divest himself of the union. They decided to unionize when we had a downturn. He's like, I can't afford to pay you guys what you want. And you're causing me a lot of headaches, so I'm going to sell the company to get rid of you. And then you're going to have to take it up with the new owners. And I think most of those guys got fired and they got replaced with cheaper non-union labor. And I honestly think that's what's going to happen here. The economic reality is the money is not there to give them what they want. So that's even, without even looking at – that's kind of a recap of our previous video. That's without looking at the Hollywood Reporter article. But I'm going to go out to Adam Conover first. So let's take a look at Adam Conover. Adam ruins everything. Is Adam going to ruin the WGA strike? <laughs> uh, you know, again, we didn't have time to really look at the, the paperwork, but he kind of breaks it down. And some of the stuff I'm telling you, uh, it's not going to fly. This is this is not 2008. It's not 2007. Uh, we have proposals that would prevent studios from eliminating the writer's room. They refuse to discuss them. Well, yeah, because if you only need a couple writers on a show, why are you going to hire like 10 people? We have proposals to protect screenwriters from free work that would have cost them nothing to implement. Okay, they rejected them and offered an educational meeting, probably to educate you on the reality, the financial reality of where Hollywood and streaming services are at, if I had to guess. Uh, we propose that comedy and variety and daytime writers on streaming have the same pay and protections as they do on TV. Their counter argument is going to be, in my opinion, that they're not bringing in the revenue that daytime TV does. They don't have the uh, Calgon ads and all of that, right? They don't have the grocery store ads or the, the Charmin ads uh, to pay for it. Instead, they offered us a minimum that would apply to virtually no shows on the air. And also, uh, they want to start paying you by the day. Uh, we propose that AI not be used to undermine our work. They rejected our proposal and offered an annual meeting to discuss advances in technology. Wow, a meeting? Thank you so much. The problem is, is we don't know where, and again, I, I think AI is a very uh, concerning thing, right? Uh, and it definitely is going to, to destroy a lot of creative careers. However, uh, the technology is always changing, always evolving. At some point, it might be that we don't need a writer's room. We have one or two people and they basically just punch it into uh, the AI. This is what they want. You know, uh, I mean, it's going to happen just like just like artists using uh, tablets now to draw with. It was unthinkable, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And, and now it's it's the norm. And I think using AI in some capacity is going to be the new normal. And unfortunately, you're going to have to learn to live with it. I mean, that's the truth. Uh, rejected our proposal, refused to counter, rejected our proposal, refused to counter, rejected our proposal, refused to counter. Adam, I am sorry. I am very sorry. I like your show. I do. But we're living in a different era right now, and the studios are in the catbird seat. The pattern is obvious. The proposals they refuse to engage with are the ones that would protect writers the most. That would protect us from being turned into gig workers. They pay by the day. Oh, my God. You don't want to be a gig worker. We are fighting for nothing less than the survival of writing as a viable career. The unfortunate truth. Adam, and you're supposed to be a guy that looks into this stuff. The economics are not there. Writing is has always been hard. Nobody's been guaranteed a job in anything. And the reality is, is that there are people like me who produce content basically for free or with little to no overhead. And there are people that do it a hell of a lot better than I do. I'm just saying. And they're willing to be, quote unquote, gig workers. So the studios know that. And they're going to be like, hey, we can just, you know, give a show to a YouTuber or we can just import shows from from other countries, which Netflix is already doing. And economically, that makes more sense to the studio. Uh, so we're going to strike to remind them that while our work has made them rich, that is true. Without us, they have nothing. No, you have made them rich, but in the past, but. Uh, now they have the option of getting content from anywhere else. And I'm sorry, that 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 is the truth. 
And it, it's not a great truth. And I really would not want to be a Hollywood writer right now. But it's just going to be like digital journalists. Like you're not owed a career. It's going to be hard, but we're going to win. Because we're going to stand together and be honest with each other and fight for each other. And when we do that, we win. No. Adam, you might. I mean, you might win this one. But again, your Adam ruins everything. Look at human history. We don't always win when we stand together. We don't. And usually people start turning on each other and backbiting and people take deals and other people won't take the deal. And then, you know, yeah, it's no, it's I don't think it's going. again. I, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to win or not, but I, I'm just telling you, I don't think it's going to play out the way you think it's going to. That is my personal opinion. We've got uh, Derek Cottingham, M.A., critics and entertainment journalists. Journalists should be in solidarity with the WGA strike. We're part of an ecosystem. And it starts with writers conceptualizing the TV film that we write about. I promise none of you want to be covering 29 seasons of Love is Blind plus our pay sucks too. Solidarity. Well, at least at least they're admitting it. At least they're admitting it that that uh, uh, entertainment journalists need Hollywood, you know, and Hollywood needs them. And that's a very uh, a parasitic relationship, right? This is coming from The Hollywood Reporter. Hollywood writers defiant as strike begins. We're not scared. Bring it on. You will be. Uh, top writers took to social media to slam studios as the WGA orders its first work stoppage in 15 years. They're going to lose billions and still give us a deal. I don't know about that. Again, I, I, I don't have any inside knowledge. I'm just looking at it from what we cover. And it looks like the studios absolutely positively are in the catbird seat. They can hire people from anywhere in the world. They don't really need you. And in fact, some of the most watched content comes from outside of this system. I'm just saying. Uh, top Hollywood writers took to social media to express defiant support for their first union walkout in 15 years and show their feelings about studios being unwilling to meet their contract demands. Uh, the Writers Guild of America announced the work stoppage will begin Tuesday afternoon. The union also released a list of claimed responses from the studios, that's what we looked at, to their proposals, which helped fire up members. The Shield put FX on the map. Snowfall writer producer Sal said, uh, Snowfall writer producer Sal Caleros. Mad Men put AMC on the map. Again, these are shows from a while ago. House of Cards put Netflix on the map a while ago. Writers did that, not some CEO. You know what you get when you put CEOs in creative lanes? You get Quibi. Okay, that's funny. Uh, they shut down an entire industry rather than part with less than 3% of their record profits. Uh, are, are they having record profits? Everybody is, is, is seeing a downturn right now. Looks like it's time to cancel my streaming services, wrote David Simon of The Wire. Ask the sons of bitches to explain their reply to our proposal to have minimum staffing levels for set coverage and post-production where WGA is performed. Unpaid internships for younger writers. That's not cool. Seriously, free work. Nah, that's not cool. That was the counter. And when a reader snarked that Hollywood writing has gotten lousy, Simon shot back. Eat a bag of stale, unsalted dicks, you smug little squib. Your attitude's not going to help. <laughs> I mean, I, I admire your moxie, but this isn't going to win you any points, man. Oh, come on. According to the WGA, according to the WGA negotiating committee, the studios are pushing for a day rate for comedy variety writers, uh, wrote comedian and TV writer Sarah Schaefer. Truly horrifying. We won't survive something like that. Absolute nightmare. What we are asking for is more than reasonable. Stay strong, everyone. We are as powerful. We are powerful as long as we stand together. What we're asking for is job security um, forever. And I, I'm sorry. It, it, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to tell you. Other, other people working in other industries, this is, this is the way it's always been. You work in tech, in a lot of tech, this is it. You're only as good as your last gig. You work in comics, you're, you're only as good as your last gig. It's disappointing that the studios let ego in the way of their fiduciary duty to their shareholders. Instead of a modest increase for the people who make their product, this will cost them billions and they're going to lose. They're not going to break the union. They're going to wind up giving us what we need. A fair deal that makes writing for TV and movies a sustainable profession. They could have done it tonight. Instead, they're going to lose billions and still give us a deal. 
Writers are asking for less per year than what Fox paid in one defamation suit. Yeah, it's probably true. It's probably true. That was a lot of money, wasn't it? That was a lot of money. All we want is for writing to remain sustainable. The studios want to turn it into a gig economy where millionaires can exploit us at will to please shareholders. Studios are trying to undo decades of precedent about how TV works and how writers get paid by keeping viewership a secret so they don't have to pay us commensurate with the success of the content we write for them. This is the problem. They don't understand. And look, I I don't agree with the studios keeping the numbers of streaming secret, right? I I think, you know, the advertisers definitely have a right to know. I think that shareholders definitely have a right to know what their numbers are. They're trying to undo decades of precedent about how TV works because TV doesn't work how it did in, in decades past. TV is fundamentally different now than it was even a decade ago. You know, even going back to 2007, 2008, everything is different now. They don't understand this. And I think that's really my personal opinion is that's what this is really about. This this to me, and look, I am not trying to be glib or smarmy or whatever, right? I am telling you, you guys are working in the horse and buggy factory and you're trying to keep them from making automobiles. It is moving on. It is moving on beyond the typical linear TV ecosystem. What it has been, what, what you've known since many of you got into the industry. And I'm sorry, it sucks. I've worked in tech. I know it sucks. Things change quickly. And now Hollywood and tech are merging and you guys still want to party like it's 1989. And I don't think it's going to work. Again, I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong and they could buckle. They could be like, oh my God, yes, we need more Netflix Shira. We better just you know give them everything they want, guys, because that's you know what's driving subs. But they're going to look at like, we got Squid Game and we don't have to deal with the union. We just pay for Squid Game and they produce it overseas and ship it over here and we get a lot more viewers, right? And a lot of the stuff we've tried that we spend a lot of money on, we spend a lot of money on writers and production costs and whatever and uh, stuck our necks, our necks out on social media, uh, that stuff flopped and it didn't bring us any views, you know? So that's what they're going to look at. And I'm sorry. I mean, they're basically... Basically, what is going to happen is Hollywood is going to be run just like any other business. And the union thing eventually is going to disappear, I think, because it's not sustainable. And again, I am not anti-union. I'm just telling you the truth. And you don't like to hear it. A lot of people don't like to hear it. Writers don't like to hear it. Creatives don't like to hear it. But the reality is, is that uh, a lot of these unions are asking for unrealistic things. And you're basically asking time to stop. And it's not going to. And I'm sorry. I am. It's again, I've dealt with I've been laid off. It sucks, man. It sucks. Uh, The same people refusing to pay writers for the content they create for these billion dollar companies or even offer health and pension benefits are making, in some cases, 50 million dollars in one year. I'm not talking about like Jeff Bezos. I mean, the execs at Roku are making $50 million in a year. This is scary, wrote Ashley Nicole Black, Full Frontal and Samantha B, or Full Frontal with Samantha B. Eh, get canceled. Eh, get canceled. Um, but a future where we accept what the companies are trying to do, low pay, freelancer writing gigs with no job security, is much scarier. You can't make good art that way. Let me tell you about the comic book industry. Ashley, let me tell you about the comic book industry. Oh, that's a whole nother rant. And writers generate far too much profit for them to accept it. So I'm on strike. I'm disappointed and disgusted by the number of rejected our proposal, refused to counters. I'm seeing uh, wrote Brian Cogman of Game of Thrones and Rings of Power. I don't think Rings of Power. I don't think you have any bargaining power at this point. I naively hoped we'd be closer on this, even if we did strike. This has driven home how important it is for all of us. Is there a more insulting response to a proposal than what if every year we made you watch a PowerPoint about how we disagree? That's literally every other job, uh, Aaron Fullerton. I am sorry. This, uh, I'm, I'm finding it very hard to sympathize on some level because I have, again, worked in multiple industries. I've worked as a journalist. I've worked in tech. I've worked in marketing. I've worked for a variety of different companies, and they were all run basically the same way. I was not union at any of my jobs. And you're only worth it to the company if you're bringing the company revenue. And you can, on an individual level, bargain for more 
money or more perks. But at the end of the day, you're responsible for you. And if the company is not making money, they're under no obligation to give you more money. If they're taking a loss on a project or a show or whatever, they do not have to renew your show. Uh, if it only takes two people to write a show, why do they have to hire 10? Why do they have to put you on full time if they only need you for six episodes? So I'm looking at it from their point of view, and this is what they're going to argue. Oh, Winona Earp, that was an IDW thing. And IDW's going bankrupt, by the way. Uh, not sure studios are digesting what happens if we tear apart the whole plane mid-flight. They are. They're very aware of what's going to happen. And they've already prepared for it. Netflix is already prepared for it. The studios don't understand how their efforts to kneecap the writing profession have radicalized the WGA members. Do they think we're afraid of a prolonged strike? You will be. Uh, then we'll be begging to return to devalued and underpaid work. We're not scared anymore. Bring it on. Try YouTube. I like my job, wrote Chrissy Shackelford of last week tonight. I like doing it. I'm sad to strike. But what's sadder is an industry where writers are devalued, money curdles at the top. And uh, creative's worth is tied not to their labor, but to the company that owns the company that owns the company's stock price. That's actually true. That's true. That's fair. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know what to say. Studios point to the economic downturn. Here we go. A tightening streaming subscriber market and ferocious competition as some of the pressures on their industry to rein in costs. And the WGA says studios have used the move to streaming as a way of paying writers less for the same work. They don't make as much money. They're not running advertisements. They're not running network ads on these shows. You know, people are binging the shows. This might be eight or 10 episodes. Uh, they're getting subscriber money and now they've got the new ad tier, but still not enough money to pay you like NBC sitcom circa 1993 money. And that's what I think these people are looking for. And I'm sorry. You know, I am. Um, so they said social media adds a new element to the strike during the last WGA walkout. Twitter had only been around for two years and Facebook for four. Well, Facebook is in shambles and Elon Musk owns Twitter and most of these people don't want to pay for a blue check. So I don't think it's going to be much, much good. I, I, I don't know. Good luck with that. I guess that's the only thing I can say is good luck with that. I hope you get what you're looking for. I'm just telling you as a, an armchair observer, the reality of the situation, and that is Hollywood does not need you as much as they needed you 15 years ago. And you're probably going to have to settle for less than you're asking for. And I'm sorry. Uh, welcome to working for literally any other company in any other industry. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.